Rothschild's empire. Well, you know, hey, hey everybody, uh, many, many want to look at this uh, Oded Yenon plan or otherwise known as the Greater Israel Project. Well, I'm kind of seeing it and coined this term Rothschild's empire. Uh, and that's really what we're seeing going on globally. Okay, so for this one, I want to start off with taking a peek at France because France is uh, front and center right now. I see all these guys talking about, yeah, Macron uh, needs to hang him on a lamppost. Well, yeah, he does, but look at, really, he's just uh, a replaceable puppet, just like Trump and anybody else that's playing in this puddle of bullshit. But for this, we want to go in to take a peek at France and Israel, actually, and see where some dirty business happened there and this will go back a little bit of history and uh, and come forward from that at any rate. So, yeah, welcome everybody. You're listening to the Wordo Rants and my name is Eddie. Let's break it down. Well, actually, we'll go and do just a brief history on Roth, the Rothschild family. This comes out of Investopedia, but it doesn't matter really what they say because I'm going to give you what my take is on it. Uh, the Rothschild family. The Rothschilds, a prominent family originally from Germany, not. They migrated in the 1600s to Germany, changed their name. It was Kalman prior to them coming to Germany, and they changed it to Bauer to blend in as they've been known to do, and I'll show you why here just in, in just a second. Pioneers in providing capital for businesses and financing infrastructure projects such as railways and the Suez Canal, which that was in the early 1800s. The Rothschilds molded the way into the international world of high finance works today. The Rothschilds empire, ah, yeah, so has its genesis during the 1760s when Mayor Amschel Rothschild, 1744 through 1812, founded a banking uh, business in his native Frankfurt, Germany, Duchy Hess, over time. And with the help of his five sons, the family business expanded throughout several European countries. Mayor Amschel Rothschild, the founder, the Rothschild's empire, had humble beginnings in its founder, Mayor Amschel Rothschild, was born in 1744 and raised in Frankfurt's Jewish ghetto. During that era, Jews were legally required to live in small communities that were separate from Christians. And that's a, there's a good reason for that. But you should have never let them in in the first place. Oh, I think they knew that back then. They were also not allowed to leave their villages at night and on Sundays or on Christian holidays. As a child, Rothschild lived in a house with 30 cockroach uh, family members and learned the business world at an early age. His father, Amschel Moses Rothschild, traded in coins, silk, and other commodities for a living. One of Amschel Rothschild's clients was Crown Prince Wilhelm of Hesse. They uh, discovered that uh, if they lended money to royalty or monarchies or governments themselves, they uh, could make more money and were more insured to uh, be paid because these guys uh, would levy the taxes on the people. In my up-and-coming documentary film, Who is a Jew?, which got started over uh, people uh, running sideways and saying this is a myth and that's a myth and all this other shit, especially regarding uh, the flood account. And then not only that, but I uh, got uh, uh, pretty well into it with linguistics and uh, names, Jewish names in particular. And that got started out when I found out that Rothschild's uh, or Bowers a previous name was Kalman. And so there's a lot of research in this uh, piece. You guys uh, be looking for it. it I, hopefully I'll get to at least uh, release part one here soon. But at any rate, uh, to, to stay on point or get back on point, <laughs> uh, we want to go back to France. And in this, I want to go to the arms control or the timeline of the 
Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, the NPT. Uh, and why is that important? Well, if we understand that Israel is a Russian vassal state, uh, it is a Russian communist state, they can call it whatever kind of dog shit they want to, but from the very uh, beginning of Israel, they had been trying to get their hands on nuclear weapons. And uh, as it turns out, uh, the, the, the people that gave them their first uh, nuclear weapons was none other than France. So the Nuclear Nonproliferation T Treaty, the NPT, which entered into force March 1970, that was by uh, Stuart Symington, John F. Kennedy's original running mate, seeks to in, uh, inhibit and spread of nuclear weapons. Its 190 state parties are classified in two categories, nuclear weapons states and WS, consisting of the United States, Russia, Canada, France, oh, France, see, and the United Kingdom, and non-nuclear weapon states, NNWS, under the treaty, all states' parties commit to the pursue general and complete disarmament, and the NNWS agree to forego developing or acquiring uh, nuclear weapons, meaning they're not going to partake in trying to get nuclear weapons. These are the first two pillars of the treaty. The third pillar ensures that states, parties, uh, can access and develop nuclear technology for peaceful applications with its near universal membership, the NPT, Nonproliferation Treaty, has the widest adherence of any arms control agreement with uh, South Sudan, India, Israel, and Pakistan remaining outside the treaty. The treaty, which was indefinitely extended in 1995, calls for the review conference every five years to assess progress on achieving the treaty's key objectives and provide opportunities to discuss new measures to strengthen the treaty. In 1957, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, comes into existence with the mission of promoting and overseeing peaceful use of nuclear technology. Uh, crypto Jew Dwight Eisenhower had uh, called for the creation of such an agency in his December 1953 Adams for Peace proposal. In the 1960s, the UN General Assembly unanimously approves Resolution 1665, which is based on earlier Irish draft resolution and calls for negotiations to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons in addition uh, to additional states. The resolution uh, that countries already having nuclear weapons would undertake to refrain from relinquishing control of them to others and would refrain from transmitting information to their manufacturers to states not possessing them. Countries without weapons would agree to receive and or manufacture them. These ideas form the basis for the NPT. On March 21, 1963, the press conference, John F. Kennedy warns, quote, I see the possibility in the 70s of the President of the United States having to face a world in which 15, 20, or 25 nations may have nuclear weapons. I regard that as the greatest possible danger and, ha and hazard, end quote. Kennedy made this statement a month after a secret Department of Defense memorandum ass assessed that eight countries, Canada, China, India, Israel, Italy, and Japan, Sweden, and West Germany, would likely have the uh, ability to produce nuclear weapons within 10 years. Well, actually, uh, that's not quite accurate because he was in heated, heated debates with David Ben-Gurion the minute that he stepped into office because he was forewarned by Eisenhower that uh, Israel had nukes. And so he wanted to inspect their nuclear facility, which was the Domona plant, and, well, that was actually the number one motive for his death. So the, 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 the country that gave Israel its first 
weapons or weapons technology or nuclear weapons technology was actually indeed France. The main reason for this uh, Rothschild wanting is their, their Russian vassal state of Israel to have these nuclear weapons was to ensure that they could keep the Arab world under fear of annihilation by this rogue nation known as Israel today. Uh, so in the middle of May 1967, two Egyptian fighters penetrated Israeli airspace and flew over the town of Damona in the middle of the Negev desert. Israeli fighter jets scrambled to intercept them but failed. A few days later, a second Egyptian jet entered Israeli and again flew over Damona in broad daylight this time. Israeli jets engaged the aircraft but were unable to shoot it down. Israeli leaders were worried Damona, a dusty town far from population centers, was the site of the country's secret nuclear weapons program. Israelis became convinced that Egypt not only knew of the program but were intended to attack it, as many years later the Israelis would do to suspected nuclear sites in Iraq and Syria. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Two weeks later, Israeli fired its first shots of the 1967 war who they instigated it, so, you know, you don't listen to the propaganda that you've been told. Israeli, Israel was the aggressor of the 1967 war, the Six-Day War, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the results of that war were well known. Fifty years of occupation and dispossession. In all these years, although it has been an open secret that Israel uh, possessed nuclear weapons, it has not been admitted uh, to uh, even by those governments that helped them acquire them in the first place. One recent note to the coverage of the war was existence of small nuclear device that Israel intended to ex uh, explode inside of Egypt if it felt it was going to lose the Six-Day War, but instead came up with the plan to attack the USS Liberty as a false flag to get uh, Americans to fight against Egypt uh, at any rate, they needed to get their military out of Egypt because they were getting hammered in the Golan Heights, and that was actually more important because today that's where Rothschilds are raping Syria of their assets in the Golan Heights. That detail uh, has gone almost un unnoticed in Western reporting of the war, but tallies with the known facts of Israel's nuclear program that the country was also determined to hold on to Palestinian lands after 1948, that it embarked on a, cl a clandestine nuclear program that was willing to use above ground and heedless of the consequences to civilians, even its own and the international law. Israel had long wanted nuclear weapons of its own, but was isolated uh, di diplomatically in the years after the founding of Israel, but by the mid-50s it had changed. Western powers were concerned that the rise of Arab nationalism and, in particular, the leadership of Jamal Abdul Nasser that they conspired in 1956 to use Israel to attack Egypt and bring down Nasser. That plan failed, but uh, and actually, funny enough, Nasser was one of the ones that exposed Israelis or the occupiers of Palestines of not being the legitimate people uh, Basically, uh, what I've concluded is uh, Russian Jews, and it is a Russian vassal state. No way, no, no doubt about it. That plan failed, but it began a long association between the West and Israel. It was France in particular enraged by the failure in 1956 that began building Israel's bomb. By the end of the 50s, there were hundreds of French uh, scientists and technicians living in Demona, teaching Israelis how to master the nuclear fuel cycle. Later, uh, uh, other Western countries, including Britain, helped. In the years since, the Israelis openly lied to the United States during inspections, supported brutal regimes like apartheid South Africa in order to get its hands on materials conducted test explosions in uh, violation of international treaties, spied on allies, and censored the press at home 
when a disgruntled technician, Mordecai Vanunu, told the world that Israel had nuclear weapons in 1986, he was drugged by Israeli agents, kidnapped and jailed for nearly 20 years after a secret trial. Uh, Israel's nuke program continues to this day. The West appears to treat Israel's nuclear weapons program the same way it treats the occupation of Palestine's as an inconvenient fact to be ignored if possible in hope that both crimes will somehow be forgotten. Well, we're not going to forget about it, folks. That's why I'm here. It's important to know these things about the Rothschild Empire and its uh, stranglehold on humanity. Uh, we can go from China in the 1700s through, along with the Sassoons who really corrupted China with the opium trade and slave trade. And uh, uh, then we can go and look at, they've, been, they've had Europe subdued since uh, late 1700s minimum. Uh, and then uh, the constant uh, uh, attack on the United States of America with their first bank from 1791 through 1811 and uh, coinciding with the War of 1812 and then again with their second uh, uh, char bank charter uh, from uh, 1816 through 1836, which um, Jackson defeated and actually was the only president to truly balance the budget of, the Amer of America. Even though he was on a big expansionist campaign, he still was able to balance the budget. That's amazing. But at any rate, and then uh, the minute that he defeated the bank was the plotting for the American Civil War. You guys go see my American Civil War 2.0. That's a really good uh, video for you to check out. That was inspired in part by the uh, Charlottesville, Virginia controlled opposition with Antifa and the alt-right and the destruction of Southern Civil War monuments and whatnot. At any rate, so... Uh, why is this important and why am I talking about this? Well, some in this movement of the yellow vest seem to understand what time of day it is and uh, that they need to stay focused on the Rothschilds and their uh, new world order and the stranglehold on the globe, on everybody on the planet. Uh, needs to be dealt with, it, 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 and I'm really glad to see that. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's go into this one article. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, the French yellow vest protest uh, spread through Europe to Belgium and the Netherlands. As the protests continue to rage in France, discontent is uh, festering elsewhere in Europe at the same time. What began as a routine protest deep in Paris has swelled to over 100,000 people, wow, and approximately five locations throughout the country, angered of yet another eco-fascist gas tax seems to have been the straw that finally broke the camel's back. This, of course, was combined with other problems too, constant foreign military adventures, falling wages, rising costs of living, rising costs of health care, privatization, this is the enemy of all everybody, privatization of essential services, cultural disruption as a result of heavy migration, another big one, and growing unemployment as a result of free trade globalist policies. But while the French version of the protests was set off by the, uh, the purposed increase in fuel taxes and ballooned into a movement addressing greater issues, good on them, there was no straw to place on the camel's back in Belgium. Uh, as my buddy uh, Willem had talked about in those areas, they're kind of lazy, but there were no new fuel taxes announced or any other new policies that was receiving coverage anyway uh, in the media or causing discontent with Belgiums at the time. So they say the Belgium government is increasing the cost of fuel, but the policy is not a new one. Belgians already pay the highest state taxes for fuel in Europe. Inst interesting enough, it seems that the final straw for Belgium was imported from France. It doesn't matter where it came from. It's good that they're doing it. For all intents and purposes, it appears that the Belgium and Dutch protests are 
uh, reverberating waves of discontent that comes from such an integrated society in Europe, whereas the indignities uh, by, suffered by the population uh, in one Soviet EU democracy uh, are grievously felt by another so, uh, Sovietized EU democracy. Let's just uh, think for a second. While everybody was supporting all this uh, bullshit about uh, destroying Germany, who was Germany fighting? The fucking, the Bolsheviks. He stopped, pretty much was stopping the Bolshevik invasion of Europe and everybody was uh, jumping on Hitler. Well, I'm not going to get into if I'm a Hitlerite or anything, but it's this kind of, you know, you got to look at these things. It was also reminiscent of the French Revolution when British oligarchs were constantly on guard for signs of discontent with dreadful conditions in the, that country, lest the same thing should ha take place in England. So why are the protests taking place in Belgium? For the most part, the protests are inspired by the same situation of, in France, i.e. falling wages, rising costs of living, rising costs of health care, privatization of essential services, uh, take an example for uh, toll roads. Uh, shit, the Europe's full of toll roads. Uh, cultural disruptions as a result of heavy migration. Big, big time. Got to get rid of that shit. And growing unemployment as a result of free trade and globalist policies. Well, it's just like here in the United States. It's mirroring uh, Europe. We're going to talk about that a little bit uh, later in this report. So let's move forward, folks. Meanwhile... I have to contend with people saying, oh, we need to find a nice, peaceful way to fucking get through this shit, da 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 And then we got other motherfuckers saying, don't look at the Jews, look at the Jesuits. Well, they fail to tell you that the Jesuits have been fucking uh, usurped since its founding, and the Catholic Church itself has been, well, we can go with Vatican too, but I think it goes back earlier than that. But it's been uh, usurped and... Uh, the coup d'etat, that's what Vatican II was about, a coup d'etat in the uh, Catholic Church. But uh, then, and I reported on this, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or whatever, uh, where uh, during the whole border invasion, which we're still under, we're going to get into that more too, uh, but uh, the Federal Reserve itself came out and said, that it wants to keep wages stagnant, which means they really want to drop them, they want to crash them. And their plan, uh, which kind of coincides with this border invasion, these fuckers want your jobs. They want your jobs uh, at any rate. And then we have here in the United States a military in, uh, a campaign uh, against the American people provably in Paradise, California. That is a, that provably a military campaign. They have it all cordoned off. These guys were incinerated, folks, incinerated in their fucking cars and shit. Not to mention how many were incinerated in their homes and whatever the fuck else, but they said it was a, the, that paradise was a complete, com, was completely destroyed. They destroyed a complete fucking town, community. Uh, they call it a hundred percent, basically, and and then they coordinate it off with military, so you can't get in and do any uh, research or investigations or look at any of the evidence or anything. Meanwhile, motherfuckers like Jamie uh, Lee from A Plain Truth is telling you, don't look at the Jews. The Jews have nothing to do with it. Don't the Rothschilds are just bankers, and look at the Jesuits. Look at the Jesuits. Well, uh, look, at, and then, uh, well, he, what he fails to do is tell you the people who are benefiting from the, this, the border invasion, uh, all this crap, uh, including the fires, are Jewish. There's enough information out there. You can, guys can go and look into it more if you like, but uh, look at the, the contracts given, given out to the rail system, whatever the hell you want to call it. it it's probably just a big donut, a big zero, uh, as far as it being any kind of high-speed shit. But nevertheless, uh, getting paid a billion dollars to uh, build 28 miles, my God. If that isn't 
raping you in the ass. Uh, it's like, you can't make this shit up. It just never ceases to amaze me. I say, that, look, at good on you, France. Gra- grab a tank, grab whatever the fuck you can, and keep grabbing. Uh, like I had said previously in, have, in several videos, how Tench Cox, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the framers of the Bill of Rights, uh, and a, a, an anti-federalist that we have to be thankful for, came out and said every terrible inter- instrument of the military is the birthright of an American. That means you. They have one tank, you should have two. And it's not to go whatever. It's to fucking use against a tyrannical government. We are deep in the shit, people. So here's what I'm seeing. Domino fall after domino fall after domino fall. Plank, plank, plank. And one more step to their goal of a new world order. Rothschild Empire. Now, how long are we going to sit here and let this shit continue? It's time to pick up arms and get busy. Don't fucking, you know what, when people tell you, oh, we got to find a nice way around it, tell them to get the fuck out of your way. Maybe you ought to shoot them uh, in the foot at least. (laughs) But, uh, you know, it's just like during the American Revolution. Same thing. Barely anybody wanted to get involved. They were all on the side of Britain and calling the the, uh, uh, founding fathers and the people that uh, took part in the Revolutionary War. In the beginning, they called them traitors. Because these guys were still linked in, uh, to this ruler, master, in King George III. Uh, we don't want masters. I don't want a master. Fuck you. You want to call be my master? Fuck off. You want to be a slave? Uh, we, we, well, we are. We're born into slavery, but it's time to break those chains, folks. Anyway, you know what? I'm going to just leave this report at this uh, right here, right now. And uh, people, I say... Help uh, ensure, keep a close eye on what's happening with the Yellow Vest movement. And uh, it, it looks like it'll be growing as a, nation, as a, as a, as a worldwide event. And I'm, I'm hoping it does, really. I really am. Because, and I hope that people stay focused on the fact that we need to go after the real target, the head of the beast, and that would be the money magic, the Kabbalist, uh, Satanist, uh, which... We all know who they are. We need to help inculcate that into uh, people that don't understand it and continue to try to wake people up to this thing before it comes knocking on your door. You know the sayings, you know, I, I didn't want to do this because I wasn't of this and I didn't want to do that because I wasn't that either until finally they came to you and there was nobody left to fucking back your shit. So, you know what, we don't want to be there Remember, little one-liners, and I love them. It's, it, for me, it's better than a mime. Is that it's easier to keep something than to get it back. And I'll tell you right now, we're at that point. With that, you know, I love you guys. Thanks for the support. Make sure you spread this message everywhere you can. Wake up as many as you can. Copy these videos to your channel. Make sure you subscribe to me on BitChute and my new channel on BitTube. I like that format. It looks like that player's a little bit uh, easier f- uh, for people that are maybe have uh, 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 shitty uh, uh, bandwidth, uh, and you can you can adjust the bandwidth uh, or the uh, quality of the video so it might play easier for you on uh, Bit.Tube. I'm liking that format, and I actually say everybody should be migrating over to uh, outfits like. Uh, bit shoot and bit tube and whatever else you find comfortable outside of the regular old bullshit that's controlled. Okay, so uh, I guess we're going to leave it at that and uh, love you guys. Wardo out.